So, okay, right off the bat, I just want to say this is not an episode of a cinephile goes to the movies. That is a parody series, and that's meant to be funny while still giving my insight and my actual opinion on movies I actually generally watched. But I just wanted to throw that out of the way because this is going to sound like an episode of A Cinephile Goes to the Movies, but no, in fact, this is an episode of The Cinephile, which is just my regular review series. <laughs> oh, my God, I Oh, where do I start with this mess? Okay, so, again, right off the bat, I, uh, I watched the movie. This movie has been getting a lot of reviews, a lot of positive reviews, a lot of positive feedback, not, like, almost some negativity. I'll say this, it got a little more negativity than it follows, but overall, it still got positive reviews. Like, it it got a generously high score on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, and there's a lot of people that are saying it's one of the hidden gems of 2019. So, I watched the movie Freaks, and (laughs) where do I begin? So, I don't recommend it, but if you want to watch this movie, it's on Netflix right now. Remember that thing I talked about with The Girl Next Door, that list, the 10 movies in the U.S. today or something like that? It was on there as number four. And, and that's why I watched it. I regret watching it because this movie was awful. (laughs) It was so bad. Oh, okay. Where do I begin? All right. So right off the bat, we're barely introduced to these characters, like barely introduced, which sometimes movie, that's a that's fine. Sometimes movies, I feel like, can get away with that good because sometimes you get a sense that the characters, you already get the sense that the characters aren't important. So I feel like some some movies can get away with that great. Like, great. This movie, I didn't feel like it was intentional. I felt like this happened because of poor editing and decided to shoot the scene right away rather than let it play out or anything and let us get introduced to the world this movie's going to take place in. And right off the bat, I did not give a shit about these characters. I did not find them likable in any way. I did not find them likable. Oh my god, these characters were so fucking annoying. I mean... I don't... There's some movies where I have to say that child acting could be really bad. There's some movies that's really good. Um, I mean, you got move the Omen actresses. You got all these uh, movies... Um, The Lodge, actually. Recently, The Lodge, which I feel like was a fantastic horror movie, one of my favorite movies of the year, that movie had some good child acting. I thought Gretel and Hansel had some decent child acting. The, The child acting in this movie is so bad. It's so cringy. It's almost... It's almost irritating just how awful these child actors in this movie are. The child, the acting. But I mean, granted, they're not given a lot to work with when it comes to the dialogue. I mean, the dialogue for these characters, especially the main little girl, is so bad. It's so bad. Um, We're supposed to sympathize with this seven-year-old girl who is the main protagonist of the film, our heroine, 
We're supposed to sympathize sympathize with her. Yet I feel like she was just an annoying brat the entire the entire time who kinda just felt sorry for herself rather than being any kind of likable character or even having any kind of redeeming arc. I feel like she was just an annoying brat making weird faces and then something would happen. Okay. Alright, maybe I should start with this. The premise of the movie is the premise of the movie is that you know what? I don't give a shit if I spoil it. Sorry. The premise of the movie is that this father is keeping this little girl isolated for away from the world and he keeps telling her that there's awful people out there that are looking for them and trying to kill them and she doesn't believe it obviously because she keeps seeing the outside world and seeing like it just looks bright and colorful and, and like brighter and more happy than it is in there and then oh no is it though is it mm -hmm. Is it? And then he, she finds um, Bruce Dern. Or is Bruce Dern? I forgot. As an, he plays an ice cream truck driver. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if there was any likable character, I felt like he was the most likable of the three main characters in this movie. I mean. I mean, he's a good actor anyway, so yes, his acting's good, and he feels like Clint Eastwood in a role, so yeah, I feel like he was, he was good in this movie. I feel like he was the only redeeming quality of this movie. However, however, no, he's not our main character. No, our main character is this little girl who has psychic powers, um, and... Apparently, people with these psychic abilities are called freaks. They, it's about mostly, it's about prejudice. It's about being prejudiced towards one another and trying to change society for the better and not allowing others' prejudice, prejudices to get to your head and just to be the best you can be. And I am, I'm not against that message. However, there's a lot of movies I feel like did that message a lot better than this. Um, okay, for example, the X-Men franchise. Well, the first three, I feel like they're iffy. They're iffy at best, but I still felt like they were trying, at least. The actors, I feel like, were trying, and it was well written especially compared to this they were well made movies um but then then i think of recently we got logan which i felt like was a damn good movie and i honestly think is the best x-men movie i've seen in a while and that movie had this type of premise this same premise about being prejudiced and not allowing the prejudice of others to get to you no matter like no matter how hard people try to push their prejudices onto you like you have to be better than them in, er in every way and aspect and i feel like logan that was a message of logan and Logan is a better movie than this. That movie was good. This movie was garbage. <laughs> this, this movie felt like it was trying to be an X-Men movie. Like, oh, there's, the, there's gonna be a Freaks 2 and more of these movies. But it just was so pandering. That's what it was. It felt pandering. It felt like it was trying to pander to the audience, trying to hold the audience's hand. And in the process, I felt like it just crumbled and just imploded onto itself. Like, it's just a bad movie. I mean, you got these scenes that are, I feel like are supposed to be taken seriously and supposed to be epic, but not only because the writing is so shitty, but also the effects are so awful, like horrible effects, that it just is kind of funny. 
Like, there's a scene where this girl finds her mom is being held in, like, this prison in a mountain. And this mom's supposed to be, like, Superman. And she does the whole, like, flying into the rescue. Is it a jet? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No! It's this girl's mom. And she just lands right onto these, like, uh, these agents that are trying to kill them. And she kills these agents. But I feel like that scene was supposed to be so serious because, oh, the mom... The mom and the daughter finally meet for the first time. Like, they actually meet. But the scene is so stupid. It is so awful. And to the point where I feel like I was supposed to take it seriously, but I ended up just giggling and laughing at how stupid it is. It's so bad. And then there's a, there's a scene where I feel like you're supposed to be taking it seriously. Mostly because the little girl finally is seeing how the world reacts to people like her and just how evil and prejudiced most people can be. And I feel like I was supposed to be sympathizing with her. I feel like I was supposed to be um, just kind of like feeling a little empathy and taking the moment seriously. However, because she's her her acting and her character, they're so bad that oh, it was crin it was hard to watch because there's a because in this moment, the uh, father of this girl is thinking about sending her or sending his daughter to this family to live with them and so that she does nobody knows that she's a quote unquote freak and and they don't want to because apparently she can get into people's heads and force them to do things against their will and at the same at the same time I'm like that kind of sounds like an awful thing for somebody to do, somebody I'm supposed to be feeling sympathy for, it, I might as well feel sympathy for Charles Manson. I mean, and that's how she acts when they are arguing about this, and the dad's like, please, please take her. And the mom's like, no, no, it can't. She literally gets like this face that's like, am I supposed to be sympathizing with this brat? Because she's not winning me over. She's just pushing me away as an as an audience member. I feel like I should be rooting against this girl. But it's actually the opposite. I'm supposed to be feeling sympathy for her. And in this moment, she starts saying, Love me. Say I say that you love me. Say that you love me. She keeps repeating it over and over again. And it's just like, shut up! Shut the fuck up! Please shut up. It was so annoying. It was bad. This movie. How did this movie get this this high of a Rotten Tomato score? How? I mean, just how? I mean, I felt like I felt it follows was a was not a good movie. I did not like the movie in the sense, but I understand why people do like it. La La Land. I did not like that movie either. I feel like that movie was just pandering and just senseless and useless. And I feel like there was no reason for it. However, I, again, if you like musicals and stuff, I understand why you would like that movie. This movie, who is this movie meant for? <laughs> who is this movie made for? Again, with It Follows and La La Land, at least those two movies know their I know their audience I know the audience that's meant for those movies I mean that those movies are meant for who is this movie meant for because I feel like nobody should like this movie nobody I I honestly feel like nobody should even watch this movie yet for some reason it has such a high score on two major critic websites on the internet such high scores it's gained so much praise from 
again, just critics and online reviewers to the point where I'm just thinking, who is this movie made for? And this, I saw the trailer for this movie and I was like, okay, that looks, it looks okay. I did not know that this, this movie is going to be this bad. Like, honestly, if I actually felt like making a worst of 2020 list, a list of movies I did not like this year, I feel like I, I would probably put this on there in the top five. This movie is just pandering bullshit. It's cliched. There's not that. There's only one character, Bruce Dern, who is likable in this movie. He's that's it, and he's not the main character. The main protagonist is an unlikable little brat, and it's like I can't feel sympathy for you. And then her father is just falling for all of her shit and just like, oh, I love you, rather than actually trying to be a parent and actually trying to do something when she actually freaks out and trying to control her. It's like, I don't right no, I do not recommend this movie. This movie was so bad. Like it was honestly, one of the worst movies. <sighs> Honestly, I feel like it's one of the worst movies that gets so much critical praise. I feel like there's so many other movies that don't get this praise that I feel like deserve it a little more. And this movie uh, instead gets that praise. And I feel like this movie was utter dog shit. This movie was stupid. It was a stupid movie. Like, there is nothing redeeming about this. Yeah, again, even Bruce Dern, who I felt like was the most likable character in this movie, even he couldn't save this mess of a movie. So, no, do not watch Freaks. Don't let, or, well, do what you want. Just remember, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend you watch this movie. This movie is so bad. Like, Hell, I reviewed Girl on the Third Floor, which I never, well, I mean, I heard of it, but I feel like it was just going to be a cliche B movie. And look at that. That ended up being one of my favorite movies I've seen recently. That movie came out the same year this movie did. This, that movie, Girl on the Third Floor, was a, was a gem. That was a, a special hidden gem. That I'm glad I uncovered. This movie is a hidden gem I feel like could, for lack of a better term, just stay hidden. Just don't dig it up. Just let it bury and let it suffocate and rot. It is a bad movie. And the fact is, this movie was in theaters. Girl on the Third Floor was straight to video on demand. This movie was in theaters. This movie was on a big screen. I can't imagine paying a theater price to see this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Don't watch this movie. Avoid this movie. It is shit. It's garbage. It is utter trash. It, there's nothing really likable about it. It's just a mess. Um, so that's, that's my review of Freaks. Uh, yeah, just an overrated mess of a movie. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please remember, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe for more videos like this, uh, hit the subscribe button. Because I, like I just said, if you want to subscribe for more videos like this. Also, if you want notifications for videos like this, hit that bell icon for notifications of all my future uploads. And I will see you guys next time with a brand new video. Goodbye. Am I a freak? Do you really think I'm a freak, huh? Do you really think I'm a freak? Huh?